For about the last month, in our Sunday morning lessons, we have been examining the subject of New Testament conversions. Today we're going to discuss a conversion account that is very seldom discussed. We're going to be discussing the conversion of the residents of Antioch. From this account, we can learn many truly valuable lessons. This account is found in Acts chapter 11, beginning in verse 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad, and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, and full of the Holy Spirit, and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus, for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church, and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem into Antioch, and there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul." In the book of Acts, there are two separate cities called Antioch, and Paul is associated with both of these. There is Antioch of Syria and Antioch of Pisidia, which was visited by Paul and Barnabas in Acts 13, where Paul's first recorded sermon is documented. This morning, we will be discussing the Antioch, which was in Syria. At the time that Paul went to Antioch, the city, the city was more than 300 years old. It had been founded in 300 B.C. by Seleucus and was named in honor of his father Antiochus. It was located on the Orientus River about 16 miles from the Mediterranean Sea. It was 300 miles northeast of Jerusalem and was the third largest city in the world during the first century. In Acts chapter 11, we see where the people of Antioch learned about the Lord and turned to the Lord and later how they grew spiritually. These are the basics of Christian conversion and sanctification, learning, turning, and growing. Learning of the Lord demands teaching the Lord's will. It also requires honest and sincere souls who are willing to be taught. The preachers and teachers in this case were disciples who had fled to Antioch for refuge. They were originally from Cyprus and Cyrene. When they came to Antioch, they began to preach the gospel of Christ both to Jews and to Gentiles. This gospel which we continue to preach today was and is not a respecter of persons. It knows no race. It knows no nationality. And Jesus commanded his disciples to preach the gospel to every creature, Mark 16 and verse 15. As we mentioned, they were preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. This gospel includes the life of Christ, the teachings of Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, his great commission, his ascension, the establishment of the church, and the current reign of Jesus at God's right hand. Friends, this is not a gospel of accommodation. It holds the same message for every person, that message first preached by Peter in Acts chapter 2. And just as those who were gathered in Jerusalem, the people in Antioch, whenever they heard the things that were being presented, whenever they heard the message that Agabus brought to them. They too wanted to know what to do in order to be saved. They were instructed in righteousness. They were taught what was required in order to become a child of God. And many were added to the church through the efforts of the apostles. We thank you for joining us for our program today. and We pray that God blesses you 
with a wonderful day.